Hey everyone, welcome back to the Stock State everyone where we learn how to swing trade with risk management. Hello, this is the Stock Estate, okay, for the new viewers right here who are new to the channel, okay, I like to use technical analysis as well as uh, risk management strategies, you know, to limit your downside as well as give you some hints as to where the market is heading and potential stocks, you know, to swing towards the further upside. So if you're into swing trading and want to do this as like a side hustle, because swing trading does require a little bit less time in a sense, in terms of staring at the screen, than day trading, because most of us here understand that we are, you know, we are also working as well. I'm also working as well. And swing trading is just a very nice side little uh, extra thing that we can do on the side that we is more of automated because during our research, during the weekends, which is Saturday and Sunday, okay, we do our stop losses, we set our stop losses, we set our entry point, and we set our target price to take profit. And what happens when Monday open is we set our area to buy in at, and it's all automated. So again, everything's set in place, uh, the trade goes through by via a limit order, then after that, it is when it hits the target price, it takes its profits by itself. And we do not have to do a lot of things uh, except for monitoring, you know, any big major news that's coming up, whether you want to, you know, sell off a position or not. But we do not have to, you know, watch the minute by minute charts um, on the screen. So in a sense, swing trade is very suitable for, you know, people who are doing this like a part time and not really a full time kind of thing. And it is a area where we can generate more income. So I like to do it and I like to share my risk management strategies because there is a lot of risk. Although people say, that, you know, some people might say that swing trading, oh, it's not, probably not as risky per se than day trading, but it could be as risky if you do not know how to limit your downside or risk manage. And that's why, that's where I come in because um, I feel like my expertise or my specialty is again in the risk management aspect. And again, I will be the guy you could say, you know, like the, the, the person that's always nagging at you, you know, to remember a stop loss, don't get too greedy, you know, the guy that's always breathing down your neck. Okay, I, I, I feel that, you know, it's not the most popular kind of thing, but I feel myself, this is kind of like a necessary evil. So if you do appreciate my content, you know, smash the thumbs up button, subscribe to my channel, you know, for more um, videos like this. Okay, I do swing trade videos every single week. Okay, I do sector analysis as well, which I think is very, very important given that the market now is super, super choppy. And I give, you know, tips such as, you know, uh, tips such as this, uh, you know, small little tips that will help you along in your journey, as well as swing training psychology as well. So without further ado, okay, today I'm going to go a little bit different kind of format. I'm going to talk about my top three swing trade stocks for this week first, uh, just for the new subscribers as well, because uh, for for that for those of them, okay, I'm pretty sure they want to see this kind of the, the top three picks first. Then, you know, the updates for my old subscribers, you can go to the end of the video and watch the updates itself. Without further ado, let's jump straight into it. I hope to give you guys as much value as I can because although I'm giving you, you know, the, the, the stocks itself, I'm actually teaching you or I'm hoping that you can take away my strategies for risk management. Let's go. All right, so you can see that from this area over here, right, this, this LATE format, this is my general, my own um, formula that I always use. It is always on my brain, right? It's either at the top left-hand corner of my screen or it's on a paper somewhere that I printed out that I will always follow whenever I enter a trade. Okay, if I don't follow this, right, that means I am not sticking to my discipline and that's actually a very bad move because that actually risks me for more and more downside. So LAT, long-term trend, we always want to trade with the long-term trend. We want to buy in at an area of value. We don't want to just buy in at anywhere of any given point of time. And we have a trigger to enter, which is a, a bullish candle or a bullish engulfing cat candle. And we must craft our exit strategy where we sell stop loss at a reasonable area, which is not too tight and pre-plan the exact amount and where you will take profit. So example, at this certain level of resistance, you want to scale half your positions out. Okay, and you know, you, at certain positions, you feel like you want to exit all of your, your uh, positions and get the most profits. So today's video, we're going to talk a little bit more. It's more of a uh, centered around the trend capture play. Okay, there's a lot of strategies that you can swing trade on. I have uh, overreaction play, trend reversal, wedge plays, trend capture, and all of these actually I made tutorials. Okay, so you can go to my playlist and check out those tutorials as well. Uh, I might make new ones in the future, but again, it really depends on the time schedule that I have. So for now, I'm going to stick to the weekend video. So look forward to it every single week. And today we're going to talk a little bit more about trend capture play where we play off a very strong trend of a certain company. And why do I think that this is the most suitable right now? Because I, I feel that the market right now is rebounding Okay, after the major sell-off last week. So if it's on a pullback, right, we, most of the time we want to play overreaction plays or trend reversal plays. But since the market is now um, in a general consensus of going up to the uptrend again, 
I decided to play more of an aggressive play, more of an offensive play, which is the trend capture plays. So the first company we're going to talk about today okay, is actually FCX. And FCX is actually a free port moment um, company, which is actually a play on the basic material sector. Okay, and this company, right, uh, it is... Um, it has been on a monster rally for the past few weeks and this this company is also in the copper industry so copper right you know all the EV sectors is coming right up right now um, they have said there's a shortage of copper you know to do their electric vehicle stuff so again copper might have might stand for you know the benefit of having this kind of catalyst potential catalyst that's coming in the future just like last time how I called up Mara right cryptocurrency right suddenly Mara from $23 where I called up it ran up to $50 plus dollars it's 100 plus upside insane run back then. So this kind of catalyst, you can see that it has a lot of impact on, you know, um, a stock itself. So copper, why do I think that it's a trending play? Because firstly, okay, let's, let's look at the, what the long-term trend, long-term trend is what long-term trend is definitely going up. Okay. Long-term trend is, is definitely going up. It's an upward trend. Looking at the daily time frame. Okay. It's going uptrend. Okay. Following this 50 moving average, pretty strong. When it dipped down below, closed up pretty soon after, and area of value, where's the area of value they want to, to buy in at, okay? To do that, we want to look in at the one hour time frame to get a better understanding of where, what is um, this company all about and where is this price movement showing where it's going to go. So you can see that from here onwards, right? Let's take a look at the, the drawings. I'm going to draw it out. Let me get my doodle. Okay, so you can see this was the lowest point. Okay, this was the lowest point of uh, the, the, the company itself in a sense, the, the stock for the past, uh, in the near future, in the near term, right? This was the lowest point. And from here on onwards, right? It start to show a, what? Okay, a reversal over here. It start to show a certain reversal. So from here, right, you can see that it's actually starting to make a, what? A higher high. Okay, so from here onwards, it's actually a trend reversal, start to reverse, okay? It's low, started getting higher, and started getting pushing up higher again. So this is actually a quite a bullish thing for this company. That means it has potential, you know, to swing back to its all-time highs at $37. So again, area of value, what you want to buy in at, okay? Area of value we want to buy in at near the moving averages, which is, let's go back to the daily time frame. Okay, near, anywhere near the... Okay, $33, I would say, is a good area of value, which is trading near the moving average. The moving average currently right now, right, you can see over here is what? Okay, the moving average is currently at here. This area over here, right, is at currently at $32.83. So again, around $1, $1 deviation for this company, I think, will be fine. So again, $33, $33, um... $32.83, right, to around $33, and which is the current price, right, $33.80, right, I would say anywhere around there, you can start to build your positions, you know, to swing it to the further upside. Okay, that's the area of value you want to play from, because it's near end, moving average, which it respects quite heavily. Next, you want to talk about a trigger to enter. Trigger to enter will probably be when we look at the one hour time frame. Okay, trigger to enter will be, okay, now, right now, right, there's been always a pullback, now it's going up again. Now I want to see a little pullback, but the pullback, I want to see it going in a straight line. So again, what do I mean by that? Okay, I'm going to draw a certain straight line over here. This is a support over here. If as long as this company, right, could potentially, okay, trade, okay, refusing the price, right, refusing to go down this level, right, which is around $3.36, okay, and I will actually take a position. This is actually a trigger for me to take a position to swing it up to the further upside. Okay, as long as it shows uh, the price movement unwilling to go down this to this level. Next one, okay, we don't talk about exit strategy. Stop losses and take profit area. Stop losses, okay, you could, you could set a very tight stop loss, okay, which is the previous swing low over here. Okay, let me just clear my drawings for you. Okay, previous swing low over here, you can put your stop losses over here, you'll be fine, okay, and profit, take it profit area, you can see the major uh, area where there's a lot of resistance, right? The first profit taking area will be probably around here. Okay, second profit taking area will be probably at the all time highs over here. There'll be two profit taking, taking area over here. See, first area can see over here, a lot of resistance, a lot of touch points over here. Second one is the all time highs. So let me just break it down for you. Stop losses, I will probably put a swing low around $32.44. First profit taking area will be around $35.58 and the second profit taking area will be around $37.33. So from an entry point of around here, right, which is around $33, okay, you can swing up to $35, $3, swing trade, 
or potential up to five dollar swing trade, risking maybe around a dollar. So again, it's a pretty good three to one and five to one risk to reward ratio for this company. Okay, again, it's up to your risk management and your own you know risk appetite to play these companies itself. So. I really hope you guys, you know, would understand a little bit more about how I play these kind of companies, right? And, you know, the understanding behind these companies. So, these companies, okay, again, 3 to 1 risk to reward ratio and 5 to 1 risk to reward ratio, okay? If you are unable to stomach such a big stop loss, right? Okay, then you might want to, you can put it a little bit closer, but you might risk getting stopped out a little bit earlier. So, this is the top process of how, you know, I, I, you know, look through a company and how I craft my exit strategy for this stock itself, okay? for FCX. Okay, now the funny thing is I'm gonna try something new, right? Normally I'll go through every single, you know, thing, you know, and my strategies for every single stock. But right now I want you, okay, I'm gonna give you some homework, okay? I want you to craft your own strategy for the next two stocks that I'm gonna give you, okay? And if you have any questions about the stop losses and everything, right? Do comment down in the sections below, okay? If, if you are really stuck at crafting it, okay? Then I will, you know, I'll give you some hints as to where I put my stop loss and my profit area, you know, and we can learn all as a community. So for the next two companies, I'm just going to name drop for you, and it's up to you, you know, to craft the entry point and why. Okay, I'm just going to give you a general consensus. Okay, if you're not quite sure, you can refer back to FCX and how I craft the entire uh, swing trade itself, and you no know, reference to how I do it. Okay, you can also uh, take a screenshot of my um, stock exit trading. Okay, LAT format. If you need to refer, this is free for you. Actually, it's not really free because it's for my subscribers only. Okay, you gotta subscribe to the channel to get this uh, information. All right. So, next two stocks. Okay, also trending, please. First one, CSTM. Const Constellium SE, okay, little, okay, this is a aluminium play, okay, it's also basic materials, okay, why basic materials, okay, I've talked a little bit more about my sector play, why I think basic materials are going to be quite bullish, and you can see any similarities, right, can you see the similarities, okay, between this and, you know, FCX, okay, let's go back to the one hour time, uh, one day time frame to see the similarities, all right, yes, okay, very strong trend upwards, okay, trending upwards, CSTM, also very strong trend upwards, right, Okay, from this one glance, right, I'm gonna give you a very rough guideline, right? Okay, probably the um, area of value near the moving average somewhere around here, stop losses somewhere below here. Okay, top take profit area, you can take the first take profit area will probably be around the, the, the highs over here, where it has the most touch point around $16.43 around there. Okay, and your homework, right, is to go to the one hour time frame, okay, and tell me what are the details, where, why are you trying to look at? Okay, look at this interesting area. Where's the, the where will you set your tighter stop loss? Where will you look to the trigger to enter? Okay, where, where? Tell me more in the comment sections below. Okay, CSTM, another trending play, aluminum play that is trending upwards for the further upside. And last company I'm going to talk about is actually DKNG. DKNG, DraftKings. Okay, DraftKings, right? Very similar pattern coming up as well. It's a very big company. This company is a $22 billion market cap on gambling and sports betting um, uh, stuff. Okay, so this company, right, okay, has been a massive sell-off, way oversold, okay, and recently showing signs of an uptrend. Again, breaking down for the moving average, 50 moving average, but recovering to the top again. So area value near the moving average, okay? Swing to the further upside, maybe around $70, okay? And again, where to sell a tighter stop loss, you need to go down to the one hour time frame and look at the price movement, the small little price movement that we have. Hmm, interesting case study over here, okay? Tell me where you're gonna put your stop loss for this, okay? I, I really wish to hope to hear from you. And okay, and that's for DKNG as well, which I think has very high potential, you know, and a very nice setup, right, for us to trade off of, especially with the gambling sector being so hot. Okay, and that's it for the top three swing trade stocks for this coming week. And now I'll just jump into a little bit of a brief update on last week's picks. Okay, last week's picks, right? Okay, it was a it was a funny little thing for last week's picks because last week's picks was a little bit stagnant because uh, the overall sector float back into technology and technology stocks was high flying for last week but the good thing about uh, the, the picks from last week is we didn't lose anything okay so again for cwh right again it just consolidated more around this area okay didn't move much okay it, i called that around 36 dollars at around 36 dollars and 92 cents now didn't really move much okay but it was not a loss so when you don't lose anything right I, in a sense, it's considered a win for me because for risk management wise, my job here is to minimize losses as much as possible because I'm honestly a more conservative uh, swing trader. I do not really lose, wish to lose money because every single percentage that you lose, to gain it back, actually you have to work even harder. Okay, If you, if you look at the math, right? Example, you lose 50%, you actually have to gain 100% on the capital left to make back whatever that you have lost. So again, the rule here is to not lose money. Okay, As Warren Buffett very famously quoted, um, back then in his prime, 
do not lose money. Do not lose money. That's the first thing that you have to take note of. Okay, so CWH didn't move much, okay? But again, it's consolidating near here, right? I can see it breaking up to the further upside again, okay? And setting your tight, tighter stop loss, maybe you can shift your stop losses to make it a little bit more tighter at $36 and swing it up to the further upside to $42, okay? CWH, I'm still very bullish. I'm still holding for the next week. KSS was our super, super short trade itself, okay? If you sell um, profit-taking target around $61, Okay, it momentarily, uh, it actually momentarily like touched it for a little bit before reversing back down. And actually, those of you who have set your automatic take profit level at sixty one dollars, right, you would have taken a sweet profit around five percent and just decent. Okay, I, I put in around two thousand dollars, five percent, five percent of that or was a decent around uh around five percent of that. It's around two hundred dollars. Okay, two hundred dollars around there, uh, hundred dollars. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, oh, my math suddenly died. Okay, so. $2,000, it was a good $100 uh, swing trade from that as well for a couple of days. Quite decent for doing not much stuff. So KSS was a um, was a success overall. And last one would be Nike. Nike, again, was a consolidating factor. Okay, we called it out around here, right? $130 plus. It just came up to a high, so 134 Then you, you go back to 132 So it actually didn't move much. We didn't gain much as well from here. It's just still consolidating, okay? It, it probably will consolidate for a little bit more before bring up to the further upside. So again, it's up to you, right? Whether you want to hold on to these companies or not, or do you think that these top three stock, swing trade stocks for next week, right, has a greater potential? Okay, my job here is not to tell you what to buy, what to sell, okay, but it's more to guide you in your swing trading journey and let you understand a little bit more about why we do certain things, okay? So again, holding a company is also, you're incurring a cost in a sense because that's time cost. That means the capital could be better used somewhere else to, you know, to swing it to the further upside. So again, it's up to you whether you want to hold on to Nike, or to move it to some other companies that uh, I've suggested. So, decisions are on you. I wish you have um, a good plan ahead and I wish you to do your homework and comment down in the sections below which company, what are your stop losses, you know, what are your entry points and we can have a discussion down in the comment sections below. Okay, good luck, good trading this week and I shall see you again in the next video. Stock stay down.